Welcome to the next part of our onboarding series. Today we'll take a look at the different light sources available in V-Ray and how to modify some of their most used parameters. Take a moment to download our project files linked in the video description so you can play with the scene in your own time. Now, let's get started. We will start with a plane light, which can be used to create aerial lights of different shapes. Then we will take a look at a sphere light followed by a mesh light, which allows you to turn a mesh object into a light source. We'll also explore the IES light, which are very useful for architectural interior renderings, and then ambient light. Next, we'll try out the dome light, often used for image-based lighting, and learn how to use the sun and sky tool in V-Ray to make realistic lighting environments. To wrap things up, we'll look at how you can easily tweak and manage different lights with the help of Light Lister and Light Mix. You can find all these lighting options right on the V-Ray toolbar. Let's start with plain light. Select it from the toolbar and click and drag in the viewport. Position it above the chair. Now let's work with the light settings and preview them with interactive rendering. From here, we can adjust the light size, which you'll see update in the viewport. You'll notice that making the plane smaller, the light it emits is getting dimmer. This happens because the intensity of the light depends on the area when the light units are set to default. This isn't the case when you choose physical units. The next setting is the multiplier, which lets you change the light's brightness. We can also change the light's color. Feel free to choose any color you like, or use temperature mode to set the light's color in Kelvin. By default, the light from the plane spreads out evenly in all directions on the side where the light is pointing. Turn on the preview to see a wireframe view of the spread angle in the viewport. You can narrow the spread by increasing the directionality. There might be times when you don't want the light source to show up in your final image. In those cases, we can go to the Options menu and make the light invisible. Next, let's take a look at other light types, like the disk and sphere light. Note that you can change the shape of an already created light source. You can switch between the different types from the drop-down menu or make one from scratch using the V-Ray toolbar. Let's delete the existing light and make a new disk light from the toolbar. Just like with the plain light, we can adjust its multiplier and change the light's color. You'll see that all three types, plane, disk, and sphere lights, have similar options like size and multiplier to adjust the light's intensity, as well as color settings, including temperature mode. All three types can also be made invisible. Note that the sphere light doesn't have directionality options. These V-Ray lights are great for lighting scenes to mimic real-world light sources like lamps and overhead lights. Next up is the mesh light. Choose an object that you want to turn into a light source and click on the mesh light icon. The mesh light takes the shape and size of a 3D model. It's great for making light sources that aren't flat or round, like string lights or lanterns. The mesh light has similar properties to the other lights we've looked at. Our next light type is the IES light. First, select it from the toolbar. Turn on Auto Grid for easier placement and click and hold in the viewport to place the light source. Click one more time in the viewport to set its target, then adjust the position in the scene. For this light, we need to load an IES profile. IES files show how a lamp's light spreads around a room. Most major light manufacturers provide IES profiles that you can download for free. These lights are super helpful for architectural interior renders, especially when you want to show the real-world effect of specific man-made light sources in your scene. Finally, let's check out the ambient light. 
V-Ray's Ambient Light is a special light source plugin that can be used to make light that doesn't come from a specific direction. It's useful for simulating things like global illumination, ambient occlusion, and more. All right, we have two more types of lights to go over. The V-Ray Dome Light and the V-Ray Sun and Sky System. These are the most used lights when it comes to lighting up an exterior scene from sunny midday to a cloudy night setup. All of it could be achieved using these two light sources. While we're going to work with an exterior scene, this could be used to light up an interior scene as well. Let's start with a dome light. The dome light is often used for image-based lighting where panoramic HDR images are used as environments. By default, there's no map plugged in, so the light will use its color to light up the scene. Let's load an HDRI using the V-Ray bitmap and set the mapping type to spherical, then plug it into the dome light. Let's turn up the multiplier to make it a bit brighter. We can also rotate the HDRI horizontally or even vertically to get different lighting results. Depending on the HDRI, even small rotations can make big changes in the lighting. If you don't have your own HDR image, you can always import one from Chaos Cosmos. When you're importing a new HDR, make sure to have the dome light selected and it'll automatically replace the current one. Remember, if the existing dome light isn't selected when you import a new HDR from Chaos Cosmos, it will create a new dome light in the scene. Now let's look at a different way to light a scene. Let's create a sun and sky from the V-Ray toolbar. The V-Ray sun and sky are procedural, which means you can move the sun's gizmo in the viewport, and V-Ray will automatically adjust the sky's appearance to match the sun's position and intensity. This way, you can easily create any lighting environment from dawn to noon. You can adjust the sun's settings like its size multiplier. Increasing it will make the sun's shadows softer. You can even turn on and customize procedural clouds. We'll go into more detail about this in another tutorial. As you've seen, I've been using the Edit tab in 3DS Max to adjust all of the lights, but it's much quicker to use V-Ray's Light Lister. Here, you can quickly change things like intensity, size, and more. It also lets you select the lights in the viewport with ease. In this scene, we used a dome light with an HDRI in combination with some invisible sphere lights to light up the interior. There are also additional sets of smaller sphere lights with their color set in kelvins. The garden lamps outside have rectangular lights inside them, and some IES lights are placed in the pool. Before you render your image, you can add a V-Ray LightMix Render Element from the Render Elements tab in the settings. The LightMix Render Element lets you work with the scene lights in the VFB even after the rendering is done. You can turn specific light sources on or off, change their colors, and even increase or decrease their brightness. This way, you can experiment with multiple lighting options while rendering interactively or even after the rendering has finished. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. By now, you should have a good understanding of how to create and adjust different V-Ray lights. Make sure to check out the other videos in our beginner series or take a look at our blog and documentation for more tips and tricks. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you soon!